I'd like to start this video with a question. Why do we need password managers, particularly ones that work well with Teams? Well, that really is because of two things. The first is we can no longer use the same password for all the accounts we log into. In the past, you may have created lots lots of accounts, use the same password, hot chocolate three or something like that, and you were quite happy that no one knows your password and everything's okay. Unfortunately, because of security breaches, hackers who target not you, but the online services that we use, they actually steal the databases with all the passwords. And there is the potential that they can get access to all the usernames and passwords. That means they know your email address and the password you've used always, all the time, uh, hot chocolate three. Then they can try other services and say, well, does this email address and password work here and so on. That means we now use these complicated uh, passwords that are not memorable, lots of letters and numbers in a random sequence. And you need a password manager to be able to actually store those and retrieve them when you try to log in. And more so in a team, because you've got those complicated passwords that no one can remember, you need to be able to share those passwords with your colleagues when you have a single login for any kind of online service. So because you need unique passwords and because you need to share that data, a password manager is the best approach. Now, there are lots of different password managers out there. Some are free, some are paid for, some are open source, some are proprietary. And this video, I want to talk about Passbolt 5, which is open source, free to use and great when you have a team and you want to share passwords. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, first off, I'd like to thank Passbolt for sponsoring this video. Now, I did have a video about Passbolt version 4 here on this channel where I cover all the different aspects of it, including all the advantages and how you install it uh, and so on. Now, I really would recommend if you're interested in Passbolt that you do take a look at that Passbolt 4 video because in this video, I want to concentrate more on Passbolt 5, the new features. I will recap the main features, but if you want some dive in depth, go and have a look at that other video. Now, what are the main features of Passport? As I said, it's open source. It uses uh, public key cryptography. Now, that's really important because if you've got a password manager and you want to share passwords, well, how do you set up a password so that you can encrypt the passwords that you're sharing? How does the man who drives a snowplow drive to work? in the morning when the roads are covered in snow, that kind of thing. How do you solve this chicken and the egg problem? And that's done by public key cryptography. I cover all of that in that previous video. Basically it means you don't need to have a symmetric password which you share, it all, it's brilliant. A public key cryptography is absolutely brilliant. And I've got videos about that as well here on the channel, but it solves a big problem and it's used here in Passbolt uh, version five. It's also used in version four. And the third thing is you can self-host it. If you're running this in a small business, it's really easy because you can install it yourself, the platform for the server for sharing the passwords on a Raspberry Pi, on a Linux box, even in a Docker image. You can do that up in the cloud. You can do it everywhere. So it's open source, public key cryptography, and you can self-host it. So it's absolutely brilliant. Now, of course, Passbolt do offer some services themselves, hosting options and so on, and that's how they're able to support the project. Now, the real power of Passbolt 5 comes in the ability to share passwords amongst the members of your team, family, organization, whatever it is. For example, let's say that you need to have access to what, a social media account or the account used to buy your paper clips or, or whatever it is, you need to have a way that everybody knows the username and password. What you're gonna do, you could take that and stick it on a sticky note in the corridor that says paperclips, dot com maybe there's a paper i don't know if there is a paperclips.com uh oh sorry if there is uh and you put in your username there and the password written on the post-it note of course that's not very good for security because now everybody that walks past can access that account and secondly when the password changes someone's got to go up there rip down that post-it note put up another one with a new part it's, it just doesn't work a much better approach is if you have passbolt as a server and then you are all connected to it when you go to access your paperclip purchasing website then what happens is that the uh, extension bra the browser extension automatically fills in the username and password and even if it was changed just yesterday you get the new username and password if it was changed two minutes ago you get the new username and password so you can act enter into that account 
Now, a lot of accounts also nowadays have two-factor authentication. What does that mean? Not only do I need to type in my username and password, I then need to use an authenticator app, and you get those on your phone from Google, Microsoft, and so on, that gives you a six-digit code, and you type that into a one-time password, and it changes like, you know, like every minute or something like that. And the advantage of those is that even if someone does steal your username and password, they can't get in because they don't have access to this authentication app. Now, what do you do when you have a common account and everybody needs access? You're not going to go around to Bob's desk and say, Bob, give me that six digit number. And then he tells you it. And by the time you're told you it's changed and you're like, no, that didn't work. You know, nightmare. Well, the great thing about Passport is it also supports two-factor authentication. So you can take the QR code. And in fact, I tested that. I just took a photo of the QR code that they, they give you when you set up to the with my phone and then cropped it reduced the resolution a bit, that's important I found, and then uploaded it to Passbolt, and it said, oh great, here's the thing, and now it starts generating those same uh, one-time passwords, which means that anybody in your team can access the account and get access to the two-factor authentication to log in, uh, all just using the Passbolt software, and of course you can share it only with the people that actually need to have access, you're not posting it publicly for everybody, you and a couple of people in supplies who need to buy uh, paper clips, they get access to it. Those people in the social media team, they get access to your social media accounts and so on. You understand the idea. So it's absolutely brilliant. Not only username and passwords, but also uh, one-time passwords with the two-factor authentication. Now, the first thing you'll notice about version 5 is the revamped user interface. It's much more friendly, modern, clean, and just generally a better user interface for accessing and sharing those passwords. For example, the filtering system used to be on the left. Now it's actually just in a drop-down menu, actually where it should have been in the first place. It's just little change like that. They've thought about it and gone, this will be a better way to do it. So they've improved the user interface. Bulk items, when you want to do something with several items all at once, bulk actions, you want to you know, tick on several of them and then share them or whatever else you want to do with them under a bulk. That's much easier now than uh, under version 5 than it was under version 4. And actually also version 5 has done a lot of stuff in the engine room, stuff that you don't see, that really paved the way for version 5.1 and version 5.2, which are coming quite soon, which bring more and more features, but they wouldn't be possible unless they'd done something with the plumbing uh, down in version 5. And one technical thing for those who uh, know about web stacks, you need to have PHP 8.2 to run uh, Passbolt 5. And if you're running a modern uh, Linux distribution, that shouldn't be a problem. Ubuntu, the latest version's got that, no problems. Raspberry Pi, Raspbian, you can run that, not a problem. But just for those who know about those things, just a little thing to note. So to recap, you've got open source, you've got uh, public key cryptography, you've got self-hosting, you've got password sharing, you've got one-time uh, one password supported for two-factor authentication, all for free, available now for you to use to improve the life of your team. Now, whether it's at home or in a small office, a charity, an organisation, a big business, it'll handle it all. And it's available today. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Sims. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.